cows. I love that sound. And this view, it's a good morning. I'll talk more about it later. There's just a lot of people here, but um, yeah, I'm gonna move my legs now. Hey guys, editing Jen here, just popping in from the future of this video, but present time, not to totally confuse you. I realize my response to doing the um, paragliding, that's what it's called, right? I'm suddenly doubting myself with the tandem, the tandem paragliding, uh, was pretty underwhelming, <laughs> but I was actually so, thrilled i don't know i got very relaxed in flight like i d i wasn't nervous at all for any of it and i just felt very relaxed um which i didn't i didn't really have expectations of how it would go but i don't know i didn't think i would be that that relaxed um i just felt very relaxed and very calm and peaceful but it was exhilarating being up that high and being able to see. I mean, the GoPro is great and I love it, but it does, I mean, none of these cameras do any justice to the scenery in this particular place, especially. Uh, but I mean, it was really high up in the air and it was just so beautiful and it was such a gorgeous day and just really lucked out with the whole thing. And it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. There's lots of other kind of airborne activities I've wanted to do for a long time. Hot air balloon. I would do skydiving. Don't tell mom. Sorry, mom. Um, bungee jumping. I'm like, is a little bit lower on my list, but I would totally do it. These are things that I would... Hot air balloon's high on the list, but paragliding was also high on the list. And it was just such... A blessing to be able to um, check that off my bucket list um, something I would definitely do again and again and again in some I would just I'd love to train to be a pilot I don't know like I just don't live someplace where that makes sense here in the flatlands of the Midwest but you never know what life what life brings you but yeah it was awesome I highly recommend the company that I used if you're in the area they were great I'll have their, all their information linked below and if you're concerned, I have any concerns about COVID stuff, um, everywhere in Italy required vaccination essentially to do anything or go into any restaurant or they call it the green pass there, but uh, American vaccination cards worked as well. Um, and everybody wore, wore masks everywhere, except when we were in flight, it just, it, there just wasn't no, any need for it and everybody was vaccinated anyway. But um, I just, I'm anticipating some questions about that. Anyway, back to the video. So I'm pretty sure this is what I see from my uh, hotel room window. This is the peak. It's just a beautiful day. I mean, they've all been so beautiful. My um, tandem pilot said that it's been very hot. I guess, I don't know if he meant that it's hotter than usual. Some camera's like, I don't know what, what is level. Um, but it feels lovely to me. It's just not very humid in Chicago at this time of year. It's usually pretty brutally humid. Um, it feels a lot like Utah um, mountain weather 
to me. The breeze, it's dry. I love it. Another hideous view. <laughs> My goodness. It's God's work. I found a sign that says where things are named. So there's the, I don't know how to pronounce it, that group. And then this group, which is right in front of us. Oh my goodness. And then, hello, a dog. And then this one, which is with all the snow. Tell me this is the heaven. I just had a very nice lunch at that little place. Realizing I have no idea. I thought Wiener Schnitzel was like chicken. I think it was pig. I think I unintentionally ate that, but that's okay. Because when in a different country, it's good to be flexible. And I'm in a position now where I feel like I can be a little bit more adventurous with my eating. But truth be told you guys, I'm not sharing all of my food while I'm here, like when I'm eating, because the judgment about what you eat is intense. Sorry, I'm filming on my phone a lot and I forget I gotta look up there. And not at the, I keep looking at the red dot, the like red cord, but yeah, don't like the red dot. Anyway, back out. And I was like the half point of the hike, but the hike doesn't take me back to the car or the cable car. So I think I'm just gonna probably end up walking back to my car because I don't want to do any more uphill. But I don't mind doing large spaces of not uphill. Let me flip you around so you can see this. Uh, I mean, just, just a little, it's a little bit intense. Also, I've never seen, um, I don't even know what to call that, a, a lift like that where you stand in it, you can fit like one person. Just so Hello, my loves. I think I am wrapping this video here. I really have absolutely no idea what kind of footage I've got. Anyway, tomorrow I check out and I'm going to head over to Cortina d'Ampezzo. I don't know how to pronounce anything. And every time I look things up, I get like five different pronunciations. So I think it depends on your dialect and region you're from and all of that. But it's just on the other side of this mountain range and has access to a different mountain range. <laughs> so I've done a lot of this one, which I, they're like Alta 1, Alta 2. I don't rem remember exactly which one is which. Maybe by the time this video comes up, I will have figured it out. But uh, I feel like I've gotten a really pretty good sense of, of this side of the mountain range and, um, or this, particular one and I and I'm excited to to go explore in the other region and Cortina is supposed to be beautiful I mean everything you, you see here is beautiful so it's hard to believe that anything is not beautiful even when I got lost the other day and was driving through like the industrial back roads it's like the most beautiful industrial back roads ever and even the industrial buildings are kind of quaint <laughs> and I don't know it's hard to explain but yeah, so um, there will be a part two uh, with the second half of my trip, and I am going to um, kind of chop up my drive, and though it's not a very far drive, but I am going to stop at a famous pass. Again, I'm totally going to butcher the name, but the Jiao, 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 Gao, I don't know how to pronounce it. Go, I don't know. It's some pass in between this town and that town. Um, that I'm really excited to, to do. Oh, and my children are FaceTiming. Sorry, I had to interrupt my chat with you because I was FaceTiming with my chiclets. Um, it's the best part. <laughs> like, I'm in the most beautiful place on earth, and the best part is FaceTiming with my children. I'm gonna start crying. Okay, anyway, I don't know what I was saying, but yes, I'm moving on to the second half of my journey, and of course I'm taking you with me. Um, but it would just be way too, so probably already way too long of a video, um, as it is. I try to keep them under 30 minutes and they keep getting longer and longer. Um, but 
I do appreciate you joining me on this journey. I'm excited to see what the next uh, few days has in store. It's just epically beautiful. And I am beyond grateful for this opportunity to do something like this and experience this, especially on my own. It's not without its challenges, but it has a lot of significance for me and just, it's a very beautiful journey of highs and lows and everything in between, just as everything is in life. But this particular trip in has been really powerful uh, for me in many ways. And maybe I'll talk about that some other time more specifically. But um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing 18,000 clips of beautiful, majestic mountains. Take my word for it. Camera does not do them any sort of justice at all. Uh, and I highly recommend you come and stay here. It's a beautiful place. Anyway, I'll see you real soon with the next part. Take care, you guys.